What is up, Packer fans? Welcome back to the Packer Day podcast. I'm your host, Andy Herman. You can follow me on Twitter at Andy Herman NFL. Appreciate you joining me today. Make sure to subscribe to the Packer Day podcast here on YouTube if you have not already. We've got a lot to get to. We had some transactions. We had a practice. I want to go over some updated 53-man roster projections, which are always fun. But let's start with the transactions that the Packers made on Monday. Remember that they do need to be down to 85 players by Tuesday. So that will be something we'll be monitoring today. But on Monday, they did release three different players, including Randy Ramsey, Cole Schneider, and Dante Vaughn. So again, outside linebacker, edge rusher, Ramsey, center, Cole Cole Schneider and corner Dante Vaughn were the three transactions releasing all three players. And let's get into why these three moves potentially made some sense. Schneider and Vaughn were both injured. So both of them, what the, the procedure here is they will be waived with an injury designation. Other teams will have the opportunity to claim them. There's no team that's going to claim either Cole Schneider or Dante Vaughn knowing that they're hurt. So then they will revert back to the Packers uh, injured reserve list and they will sit there until Green Bay and Cole Schneider and Dante Vaughn figure out some sort of injury settlement, uh, which is a monetary fee, but also something that'll go against the salary cap. And then they will work that out and they'll basically be off the roster at some point, unless both of them have some sort of long-term injury that would last the course of the season, in which case then they would just keep them on IR all this year, and then they would come back next year. I don't foresee that happening with either Schneider or Vaughn, so uh, those will likely be injury settlements and releases at some point, probably in the near future, but sometimes those can get a little bit messy, so you never quite know for sure. But uh, as I've mentioned in the past, I hate seeing injuries for undrafted free agents because this is their chance. And basically what you need as an undrafted free agent is uh, availability, a little bit of luck and an opportunity, right? And as soon as you have any sort of injury that knocks you out for any sort of training camp and preseason games, it just takes away really any opportunity to make the team. And this is ultimately what's going to happen more often than not is these type of players will get released with that injury designation if they are out injured and they'll go from there. And that's unfortunately uh, for a lot of the, the players, the last of their opportunities. I'm sure Vaughn and, and Schneider will get tryouts and opportunities down the road with other teams and hopefully they make the most of it. There's a lot of leagues now with the XFL, the US. SFL, the CFL, uh, that certainly you can bounce around in and make a name for yourself and come back at a later time. So again, nothing but best of luck for Schneider and Dante Vaughn, uh, but both of them released with an injury designation as of Monday. The one that was uh, slightly surprising to some on the old twitter.com uh, was Randy Ramsey. And this should not actually come as a surprise in my opinion, and actually makes quite a bit of sense. The first thing, and you hate to see it, but uh, Randy Ramsey just wasn't the same player. And let's be clear, you know, a couple of years ago, it's not like Randy Ramsey was like this starting caliber dominant player, right? He was a fringe player who made his name on special teams who could put together an odd, you know, pass rush every now and again, right? So you, if you're that type of player, you have to have all of your physical gifts at their full disposal. And unfortunately, with Randy Ramsey coming back from injury, he just hasn't quite looked the same as he did a couple seasons ago. And that was clearly going to be an issue. And he was well behind, in my opinion, clearly the starters, but not only that, Tipa Naliai, you know, Ladarius Hamilton, Jonathan Garvin, and then even like, I think, a, you know, I think a, he was even behind, you know, a couple of the other guys as well. So um, I, I think that makes sense in that regards. I think the other thing here is we had just seen through the last few days that Ramsey was back and then he was hurt and then he was back and then he was hurt and he was back now. And I think that's why it makes sense to release him right now because you don't want him all of a sudden to go out hurt again or aggravate his ankle. And all of a sudden he needs another ankle surgery and you have to release him with an injury designation and then put him on IR. And if he's out for the year, you end up paying him for the entirety of the season. And that counts against the salary cap. I think so few people truly get and understand the fact that yeah, your 53-man roster counts against your salary cap. Your 16-man practice squad counts against your salary cap. And anyone that's on your PUP list, anyone that's on your NFL inactive list or non-football injury list, I should say, and anyone that is on your IR list is all going to count towards the salary cap. And you might be thinking, all right, well, you know, okay, so if Randy Ramsey ends up costing, you know, 900K towards the salary cap, no big deal. Well, that's, it's okay. Like you could say that, but 
remember, you can carry over whatever money you save from this year's salary cap into next season. And if you all of a sudden put Randy Ramsey or have to put him on IR for the season and you do that, you're not using that money towards a 53-man roster spot. You're going to release him. So it's just a sunken almost $1 million towards your salary cap that you can't use towards next season. So that you know, you add a couple of those up. And Gabe Burkich is already going to get some sort of injury settlement. Now Dante Vaughn, Cole Schneider, likely going to get some sort of injury settlements. You add all of those up over the course of a season and all the guys that go on IR, and you have a lot of money that goes towards players on your injured list, not to mention the guys that you have to re-sign or sign, excuse me, to take their place on the roster. And that that money just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's less money that you can carry over into next year, which means you need to then borrow money from future seasons. And it can just get uh, all very, you know, complicated and complex very, very fast. So this made sense, in my opinion, where he didn't look the same. He just got back and was ready to practice and sort of healthy again, you know, it makes sense to release him before he has another setback and now you have to pay him some sort of injury settlement or worse, he has a, a major setback and he's on IR for the entirety of the season and so on and so forth. And you end up paying a million dollars that you don't want to spend on Randy Ramsey. So that made sense to me. A Green Bay will still have to make uh, a few different cuts. We'll get to that more in just a moment. But before we get there, they did claim another player as well. They claim Nate Becker, who is a tight end most recently with the Carolina Panthers. They just waived him. He's a 6'5", 264-pound tight end. He was an undrafted free agent. Uh, he was in the 2019 draft class, so not exactly the most recent draftee in the world, but 2019 undrafted free agent. He played in the 2019 preseason with Buffalo, played 61 snaps per pro football focus at a 49.9 grade. Remember, 60 is average. In 2021, played with the Bills in preseason, 58 snaps at a 59.5 grade. And then 2022 with the Panthers this season, he played 15 snaps in their first preseason game with a 30.3 grade, not great. He also played in the regular season for the Bills in 2020. He played 30 snaps with a 43.5 grade. So not a ton of snaps under his belt in preseason or regular season combined. What, it's about 150-ish snaps uh, total between preseason and regular season and all of them below average grades in every season. So not probably the most dynamic player that they're adding to the roster. This is likely a camp body, you know, to, to sort of look at and work out over the course of the next couple weeks, see how he does against the Saints, uh, both in practice and in the game. If he can do something, you know, maybe keep him around for another week and start looking at a practice squad spot, but very unlikely that Nate Becker can get his name in the 53-man roster competition. But crazier things have happened. You never quite know. And we'll see what happens with Nate Backer and how he does over the course of the next week, week and a half before they make final roster cutdowns. All right, some other logistics and we'll go over practice first. Uh, there were a handful of players that returned to practice, which was great news. Dominique Daphne, Tipa Naliai, Ladarius Hamilton, and Juwan Winfrey. With the releases of Schneider and Vaughn, this left a much smaller injury group uh, than we've seen lately. Dallin Levitt, Tariq Carpenter, Darnell Savage, Ennis Gaines, Akil Byers, Mason Crosby, Kylan Hill, and David Bakhtiari, the only players that were not practicing in any capacity. Only eight players on that list, which again is far much farther down than it has been. They got the three pup guys back a couple days ago, four guys returned from injury on Monday, and they released two of their other players that were on the injured list. So you're seeing much fewer players on that list. And if you look at it, as far as like what you're you know looking at is you know players that really matter for week one. One, only three players left on that list, Darnell Savage, Mason Crosby, and David Bakhtiari. Not insignificant by any means. Getting Bakhtiari back would be huge. Getting Savage back would be huge. Getting their kicker back would be huge. So those are all three worth monitoring, but only three players on that list that you have any sort of, you know, you'd be concerned about if they weren't ready for week one, right? So I think that's a really good sign for Green Bay right now. They have two preseason games they still have to get through, not to mention a bunch of practices, but seems to be trending in the right direction. Knock on wood, hug your lucky rabbit's foot, every other uh, uh, good luck charm that you need, because clearly Green Bay does not need any more injuries. But like I said, it is trending in the right direction. All right, offensive line. Elton Jenkins was back. This was just a walkthrough practice. And I should mention, I was not at practice. So these are reports from various people, including Rob Domovsky and uh, you know Matt Schneidman and Bill Huber, et cetera. So 
Uh, Elton Jenkins was back at right tackle. And this was just walked through. So he's going in team drills and he's going through the walkthroughs. Jenkins, Watson, Tunyon all did. They're not going to be ready to play in team drills quite yet. But just since it was a walkthrough, we were able to see where these guys lined up. Elton was back at right tackle. John Runyon Jr. was back at left guard. Royce Newman moved to right guard. So from left to right, it was Yash Nyman, John Runyon Jr., Josh Myers, Royce Newman, and Elton Jenkins. And that very well could be the starting lineup from left to right when the Packers take on the Vikings in week one. Still some hope that maybe Bakhtiari is in that left tackle spot. Not a guarantee that Elton Jenkins is ready to go week one, but certainly not out of the realm of possibility that Yash, John Runyon Jr., Myers, Newman, and Jenkins could be your starters from left to right. One other uh, injury note, Malik Taylor was no longer donning the red jersey, so he is ready for full contact, and that should help him out as the Packers get ready to take on the Saints in practice on Tuesday and Wednesday. All right, as far as those you know, 85-man roster cuts that I talked about earlier. As mentioned, Green Bay needs to cut three more players. We could see two players who are on the injured list sort of take a, a similar approach that Green Bay did with Cole Schneider and Dante Vaughn, and that's Akil Byers and Dallin Levitt. Now, Levitt's a little bit more interesting. It, it doesn't, I mean, here's the thing, right? If it's a if it's a season-long injury, they could just put him on IR and just do that now, and then that would take one player less that they'd have to get, you know, cut basically because he'd be on IR. If it's not, and they really want him back as a special teams guy at some point in the season, then it gets complicated that you need to keep him on the actual 53-man roster to start the year and then put him on IR, which means you have to subject somebody else to waivers, which could get a little bit complicated. So that will be worth keeping an eye on what they do with Levitt. But if they think it's just not worth it at this point and him coming back from injury is going to be a process or a problem, like they could just release him or put him on IR and have him be done for the year. And then, like I said, he would clear waivers if it gets to that point. We don't even need to go through all of it, but Dallin Levitt could be one. Akil Byer, same thing. As I mentioned, if you're an undrafted rookie and you're just not able to play, like you're just so far behind the eight ball. So that could be another player that they release with an injury designation. Other players that could be in some sort of jeopardy with Patrick Taylor back in practicing, Dexter Williams could now, you know, they got they got the snaps they needed out of him in that first preseason game. I think Williams will stick around. I think he'll make it through this, but that could be a route that they go and just release Williams. Ishmael Hyman with Christian Watson coming back. I know he's not ready to play, but with him coming back and even practicing in some capacity, they could, you know, release Hyman. Uh, Ty Clary and George Moore along the offensive line. I think these two are more buried on the depth chart and could end up being released. I don't think these guys are key practice squad op you know, options down the road. So both Moore and Clary could get released. Elize Mack and Sal Canella with Green Bay bringing in a new tight end and already having a bunch of tight ends on the roster. That could be not great news for Elize Mack or Sal Canella. Chauncey Manack, Ellis Brooks, and Ty Summers would be other ones that I think could be on that list. So need to release three. I would be surprised if it didn't come from the list that I just mentioned. Again, Byers, Levitt, Dexter Williams, Hyman, Clary, George Moore, Elize Mack, Canella, Chauncey Manack, Ellis Brooks, and Ty Summers. And for those of you who maybe think like, wow, Ty Summers, like Summers is no longer on any of the special teams. He is well behind all of the linebackers. Like it would be the most, like one of the most shocking things if Ty Summers made the 53 or I think even the practice squad at this point. And if that's the case, you know, let the guy go get, have the opportunity to get another job somewhere else in the next couple preseason games. He just seems to not be in the, really in the conversation on defense or on special teams. So you, at this point, you might as well release him and, you know, give him an opportunity with another team to catch on somewhere. All right. That brings us to the main topic for today. It's always fun going through 53-man roster predictions. I'm not just going to go through the 53. I'm going to go through all the roster designations, who I think could make the practice squad, and then who ultimately could end up being cut. So we'll go position by position. We'll do this a little bit lightning round. I don't think we need to dig too far in, but I'll go through a couple of the ones that I think are more interesting. Quarterback, I have two players, Aaron Rodgers and Jordan Love. No surprises there. Running back, Aaron Jones, AJ Dillon, and Tyler Goodson. So this is the first interesting one. If Kylan Hill's back in time, to me, he clearly gets that number three running back position. I don't think it's relatively close at this point. So he would be running back three. I think they would release everyone else. If um, if he's not ready, I do think there's a variety of options. I think Tyler Goodson has shown the most talent and is more likely to get that number three spot. But I think Patrick Taylor is still in the conversation, although I think he's had a very, very, very quiet camp up until this point, And I do think he's got a lot of work to do. 
I do think BJ Baylor could still be in the conversation. And as I've mentioned before, I do think it is very possible that they could just go with Jones and Dylan, release the rest of the running backs, get two or three of those guys back on the practice squad, especially now that Dexter Williams is there too. Like if you can get three of those guys back on the practice squad, you can elevate these guys three times. You know, now you've got, you know, six to nine weeks covered just from practice squad guys being elevated. And then by that time, Kylan Hill will be back and he takes that number three running back spot. So I do think there are a variety of options here, but for now I'm going Jones, Dylan, and Good at wide receiver. This is a tough one. I am sticking with six, Lazard, Watkins, Cobb, Watson, Dobbs, and Rodgers. I don't think Sammy Watkins is 100% safe. That is one that I'm still very intrigued by. Juwan Winfrey just got the glowing review from Rodgers. So that could be a little bit complex and complicated, but I do think here that these are your six that are actually going to see the field. And then I don't think Winfrey or Toure are worth keeping just for their special teams prowess. That's not either of their main fortes. You know, if you're just keeping somebody on special teams, maybe you keep Malik Taylor. I just don't see that happening. Danny Davis has been awesome, but I just think he's going to really struggle to make the the actual 53. I think he's a practice squad guy, but I think it's these six. And I think the emergence of Danny Davis and the fact that they have Winfrey, Toure, and Danny Davis that they can all release I think they'd want all of them back in the practice squad, but I think they'd feel very comfortable that at minimum they would get two of those guys back, if not all three. And I think because of that, they probably feel a little bit better releasing those guys and they can always elevate one of those guys. And even if they don't, they could even still put a Malik Taylor on a practice squad who's been a 53-man roster guy the last couple of seasons. So I think their actual depth at this position makes it more likely that they release a bunch of them knowing that they're going to get at least two or three of those guys back on the practice squad and still feel really good about it and maybe not lose any of the guys they really care about whatsoever. But even if they lose one, they still get the rest of those guys back and are still going 9D at wide receiver. So I think that's where I'm leaning right now. Lazard, Watkins, Cobb, Watson, Dobbs, and Amari as the six wide receivers. Tight end, I'm going five. Tunyon Lewis and Deguara to me are locks. Tyler Davis still has some work to do. I think this could be a route that they go if they want to keep a seventh wide receiver. I think Tyler Davis could be a player that could be on the outs in that situation. Now, it depends on how comfortable they are with Tunyon playing a decent amount of snaps. If Tunyon, they don't feel comfortable with that, Tyler Davis is probably like your next true, like, like sort of overall tight end right now. We saw him struggle with the drop. We saw him struggle in blocking. So he has a lot of work to do, but DeGuara is more your H back. Daphne's more an H back fullback. Mercedes Lewis is just a blocking guy. So like you don't have that sort of tight end that can do a little bit of everything. And Davis has to do a little bit of everything better. And he still has work to do to make this team. I think the big thing that set me over the edge with Davis is that he was on three of the four special teams units in this past preseason game. Now, the red herring there is that Daphne didn't play. And I think there's a real good chance that Daphne could just take all of those and and Davison isn't on any of the special teams units, which then would spell some potential disaster for Davis. So Davis is the one here that I think still has work to do. I would say Daphne likely, DeGuara, Lewis, and Tunyon Locks, and Davis is, I think, a 50-50 at this point. But right now, I'm keeping him on the roster, more specifically due to the fact that I I think they're going to want to keep Tunyon at a snap count, even if he is right ready for week one, which could lead to them keeping Davis around a little bit longer. Offensive tackle, I'm going Bakhtiari, Elton Jenkins, Yash Nyman, and Caleb Jones. Caleb Jones, the interesting one here. I just think there's some unique upside to Caleb Jones, and I, I'm you know, hesitant to think that they're going to give up on that this early. Could very well be a practice squad guy. Wouldn't shock me, but at this point, I'm going to put him on the 53. Guards, John Runyon Jr., Royce Newman, Zach Tom, and Sean Ryan. Centers, Josh Myers, and Jake Hansen. So those are the guys I'm going with. Cole Van Lannen, I think certainly in the conversation as well, uh, but I think he's more of a practice squad guy. And Rashid Walker just hasn't, he's just been sort of behind the eight ball immediately with the injuries that he had starting in camp. He hasn't had many team activities. So I think he's probably a practice squad guy. And Caleb Jones has been good enough to earn that spot. They usually keep uh, an undrafted guy here or there. I think that could be Caleb Jones this season. So Jenkins, uh, Bakhtiari, Nyman, and Jones at tackle. John Renning Jr., Newman, Tom, and Ryan at guards. And then Myers and Hanson at center. 10 offensive linemen total. I suppose I should mention there, that means that Bakhtiari would be ready to go and they don't keep him on the pup list. 
That's maybe wishful thinking. If you told me that Bakhtiari was out a lot longer, wouldn't be shocked. If you told me he was ready to go week one, wouldn't be shocked. I'm going to say that he is on the active roster week one. We'll see what happens, but that's where I'm putting him right now. All right, defensive side of the ball. The f- maybe this is the most difficult one for me. I kept five defensive linemen, Kenny Clark, Jerron Reed, Dean Lowry, TJ Slayton, and Devontae Wyatt. I did not want to cut Jonathan Ford. I did not want to cut Jack Heflin. I think Ford has a unique upside and and he has a long ways to go as a developmental prospect, but I think he has a unique upside and Heflin's been fantastic in camp, like literally fantastic. So those are tough cuts, but I think the emergence of Chris Slayton, the fact that they have five guys that they're probably going to play 99% of the snaps with those five guys anyway, leads me to believe that sort of like wide receiver, that they could cut Ford, Heflin, and Slayton and feel pretty good that they're going to get all three back. And at worst case, still probably get two of those guys back. So they're still going seven deep along the defensive line. That's where I would lean right now. Listen, Heflin and Ford could be in a battle for the sixth spot. Both of them could be like, they could go in so many different directions. But I think the fact that they've got five legit, legit guys, and then the fact that you hope, like you're you're fairly certain you're going to get at least one of you know, Jonathan Ford or Jack Heflin back in the practice squad and almost assuredly Chris Slayton, if you want him back in the practice squad, I think that gives you a little bit more leeway to cut those guys. And if you lose one, maybe it's a bit of a bummer, but you can probably live with it where it's not going to change the, uh, you know, outcome of the season or the, you know, DNA of your team all that much. Edge rusher, this is another tough one. Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, Jonathan Garvin, Kingsley Nigbari, and Tipa Naliai. I think Ladarius Hamilton's definitely in the conversation. Enigbari, Preston, and Gary are going to make it. I think there's two spots for three players out of Tipa, Garvin, and Hamilton. I think Garvin has just been the best of the bunch as of late. Like I said the other day, if you would have told me that he would have made this team, I think I would have been shocked just based on his season last year, based on his not participating at times in OTAs and mini camps. Like I just didn't see it happening, uh, but he's come on really strong as of late, and he's been the best out of Hamilton, Tipa, and Garvin. Uh, you know, over the last I would say week or so. So I'm going to go Garvin right now. Like I said, Enigbari is going to make it, and then Tipa is on the, m- the most special teams of any of those other edge rushers. So I- I'm going to leave Tipa on there now. Like I said, I think Ladarius Hamilton's still very much in the conversation. I think they could also only keep four here and sort of release maybe Tipa and Hamilton and feel pretty good that they could get those guys back on the practice squad. Uh, but for now, I'm going five, including Garvin, Enigbari, and Tipa. I'm going four inside linebackers, Devondre Campbell, Quay Walker, Isaiah McDuffie, and Chris Barnes. Barnes and McDuffie will be core special teams guys. Quay and Campbell are going to play 99% of the snaps. You have a guy in Chris Barnes who was a starter like the last two seasons, and Isaiah McDuffie has looked so much better this season. I think those are the four. I don't think you need anything more than that. Maybe Ray Wilborn gets in the conversation, but I don't think so. I think it's going to be just those four. Corner, Jair, Stokes, Douglas, Nixon, and Shamar I think are good. Number six is interesting. I'm going Rico Gafford now. I do think Keandre Thomas could get in this conversation. I think they could go five. I think they could even look to maybe claim a different corner uh, off of waivers at the end. But Rico Gafford in all four of the main special teams units, and he has shown some uh, upside as a corner long-term. Ridiculous speed, as I mentioned in the past, not totally unheard of that maybe he could even get an offensive package based on his you know wide receiver skills and his ridiculous speed, maybe even as a decoy. So I just think he can do a lot of things for you. Not sold on it. His corner play as of late has been shaky at best, gave up the huge touchdown against the 49ers. So he has work to do, but I think this is a special teams keep more than it is a corner keep as the number six corner here in Rico Gafford. Four safeties, Adrian Amos, Darnell Savage, Vernon Scott, and Sean Davis. I just don't think you need to keep any of the other guys. Levitt's injury, I think, changed some of the calculus here, Uh, but I'm going to go with just the four safeties. Kicker, I'm going to say Mason Crosby's back for week one, so he's on the roster. Pat O'Donnell and Jack Coco. So those are the the 53. Just to run through it really quick one more time, Rodgers Love, Aaron Jones, A.J. Dillon, Tyler Goodson, Alan Lazard, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Amari Rodgers. Robert Tunyon, Mercedes Lewis, Josiah DeGuara, Tyler Davis, and Dominique Daphne, Bakhtiari, Jenkins, Nyman, and Caleb Jones, JRJ, John Runyon Jr., Royce Newman, Zach Tom, Sean Ryan, Josh Myers, Jake Hansen. On defense, Kenny Clark, Jerron Reed, Dean Lowry, TJ Slayton, and Devontae Wyatt. Edge, Rashawn Gary, Preston Smith, Jonathan Garvin, Kingsley Nigbari, Tipa Naliai, 
linebacker, Devondre Campbell, Quay Walker, uh, Isaiah McDuffie, Chris Barnes, corner, Jair Stokes, Razul Douglas, Keyshawn Nixon, Shamar Jean Charles, and Rico Gafford. Safety, Amos Savage, Vernon Scott, and Sean Davis. And then Crosby, O'Donnell, and Coco. Pup list, Kylan Hill in this situation. My 16 practice squad players, I'm going Danny Etling, BJ Baylor, Jawan Winfrey, Samari Toure, Danny Davis, Cole Van Lannan, Rashid Walker, Jonathan Ford, Jack Heflin, Chris Slayton, Ray Wilborn, Kobe Jones, Ladarius Hamilton, Keandre Thomas, Tariq Carpenter, and Innes Gaines. I think those would make a very, very good 16-man practice squad. Players that are cut in this scenario and not on the roster, not on the practice squad, not on anything. Patrick Taylor, Dexter Williams, Malik Taylor, Ishmael Hyman, Nate Becker, Sal Canella, Alizé Mack, Michael Manet, Ty Clary, George Moore, Akil Byers, Chauncey Manack, Ellis Brooks, Ty Summers, KB Nento, Dallin Levitt, Micah Abernathy, and Ramiz Ahmed. That is my 53-man roster prediction. That is going to do it for me today. We have two very exciting uh, practices between the Packers and the Saints. I will be at both practices. I'll be reporting back here. So as mentioned at the onset, make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. But until next time, and as always, Go Pack Go!